so uh, so what is it that you're going to be doing? And and that's that's interesting. Um, it's always hard to come up with good specs that are not too hard, they're not too easy. And uh, we worked very hard at trying to come up with a solution. And the solution is we don't want something that just um, is specific to one domain. So we look at different domains and we find the best thing to do is um, do a project in the area of data, data intelligence, data processing, big data. Because data these days is everywhere and from different domains. So focusing on data is going to be a good thing to give us a, uh, an interesting case study. So the case study is we have a consortium uh, called FinTech AI, and this consortium wants to build something we call event intelligence application. And the event uh, intelligence application comes from very simple uh, observation. Everybody is doing AI. So AI is everywhere. Um, you know, people are applying AI in different domains. But what people forget is you can't do AI if you don't have data. So if you look at the typical AI project, you'll find 80% of the money is gathering the data and 20% is doing the AI. So, so companies in the AI space or even research organization, research groups that do AI, they're not doing AI. They're spending all their time data gathering and data processing. So the idea is how about we become a company and we supply data sets for people to do their AI and we remove all the burden for, for uh, getting and, and clearing the data. So this is the idea, is we create data sets for companies to be able to do their uh, AI application or machine learning or decision making. But because we will create one application, uh, we will use DevOps principles, cloud, and use different teams. So, so if I'm a company, and I need data about the weather, then I have one component that specializes in weather. If I have stock market information, I have it. So it's easy to build microservices that will specialize in different types of data, and then different teams can build microservices to grab data from different sources. So that's, that's an easy principle, and it fits well with the idea that different teams can look at different data sets. However, the company has to give some design recommendations because if you're going to get data from different sources, how do I make sure these data, uh, data sets are going to be uh, compatible with some kind of standard? So we have some recommendations. So we say you, know, you can get data from different sources, and then once you put them in your infrastructure, you are standardizing them as an event data set. So an event data set will look the same. Uh, because when you, when you get data from different sources, they will be all from different formats. So you are actually standardizing them somehow. So when you build a use case, you don't have to worry where the data is coming from. You can just go into your event repository, get the data and give the data set to, to do the use case. So you can have use case one is using public health. Use case two could be using climate. Use case three might be using combination of data from two different domains. So this is a whole idea, is making the people doing AI focus on the AI. They don't have to worry about the data because the data will be acquired, merged, cleaned, polished by our application. So that's, that's the idea. So what are these use cases? Some companies, for example, they want to look at the weather data because um, they work in agriculture and they need to know, you know, uh, doing some risk management. 
uh, for example, bad weather will mean the production of canola is going to be low. That means the price of these products is going to go high and so on. So, so sometimes uh, one source of data can help a company uh, looking at future projections in particular uh, uh, industry sectors. Sometimes you look at just news to that can affect some oil producing country it means the oil price is going to go up it means you know there's going to be some other impact so you can look at one source of data and just analyze it but the advantage is when you start combining multiple sources to look at these cause effect patterns oh when this thing happened here uh, for example when the weather has this particular pattern the stock price goes up or if I have this particular piece of news this will affect uh, something in in another area so this is very interesting for companies when they start combining multiple sources of data and essentially this is what when we say AI essentially it's machine learning and with machine learning you dump lots of variables and you're looking at which variable will influence any other variable. And if you have the data, you can do anything. So you can see that these kind of, uh, these kind of use cases have a prerequisite good data set. And of course, once you define historical patterns, you can do predictions, you know, what if scenario, if this happened, what should happen there and so on. So, so really, it's a simple problem getting data but at the same time this simple problem opens up a, a the possibility to do lots of very interesting applications now this is the software architecture so we're working in a company and the company will say this is our software architecture and you can see that all the the data that we acquire is in the data lake so we say this is a data lake and it has all the data. And of course, the data that is in there is standardized according to, to our own model. So you can have data sets about the weather, the stocks, and so on. Then you have a, a microservice layer and you have different services that will uh, contribute or uh, consume data sets. So you have uh, you know, you can access a data source, you can transform an event data set, you can download, you can visualize. But essentially, this is where you have to contribute. You're going to be contributing microservices to this architecture to expand the capabilities of the architectures to be able to do more things. And of course, there is a user interface where you have to design some kind of user experience to do something. But in this course, yeah, the focus is more here. I mean, I think it's only the last sprint where you have to build some kind of user interface uh, built on top of the existing microservice space that we have. So, yeah, so the microservices will be the focus. So the microservices, we divide them into three categories. Import service means you go to an external data source, you grab the data, and you push it into the, the lake. The transform service, you take a data set from the lake, you do something with it, and you create a new data set into the lake. And an export service, you consume a data set, and you do visualization for the student, the, the, the end user, or a graph. Or the end user may just take a data set and feed it in, in another software uh, system. Of course, this all relies on having some kind of standard way of representing an event data set. So we say a data set has a data source, a data set type. Uh, if you want to understand what is an event data set, think of CSV file. So what is a CSV file? It has rows and it has columns. 
So every row is an event. Every column is an attribute. That's it. The only additional thing that it has, there's always a timestamp, meaning that every row has a time. And that's important because when you're reading data, it will be timestamp data, and the timestamp will help you combine information from different sources. So we have this model, which I'm not going to go too much into, but essentially any data, whether you get weather data or stock market data or anything, should be able to be represented as a JSON. And we give you some uh, you know, very simple uh, format. We are aware that this format just being created for this course will have limitations. So we, we're using a versioning system where, okay, this is version 1.1. Somebody picks up that, oh, why don't you do this? It's better than becomes 1.2, 1.3. So we will have multiple versions of the data model that will be updated as people maybe pick up some uh, things. Or if there are some major flaws, we can leave that for the next course. But again, we are simulating a company where we have some standards. People start working and they realize there are some limitations, they raise them, we do new versions, and that's part of the, uh, the situation that we are trying to emulate in this work. Spirit one requirements, uh, uh, Nick is gonna, is it tomorrow? Yeah, so tomorrow he's gonna go through the details of what has to be done with the criteria and everything, but this is just to, to give you a high level uh, requirement. So, the ecosystem is empty, so we need some services to start populating the, uh, the application with data. So basically, you need to do a microservice that we will call an import microservice. What we have done on Confluence, we have given you a list of different sources of data. So you can go get weather, uh, you can get uh, stock market data, can get lots of different sources. So we, we put there what we think are interesting types of events. Based on our experience working with industry, we found a lot of people need this data. And then when you do an import API, sometimes you, the data is in the website, you need to go scrape it and make it in our format. In some cases, the data has an API, so you just read from that API. Sometimes the data is very hard to get and you need to build a, a database. So what you do, you gather the data somehow, you create a database and then you do an API around it. All these possible, all these things are possible depending on the data source that you have chosen. Or it could be a combination of these. So I've listed, I've listed Yahoo, Disease, uh, Australian Financial Review, Weather, Online News. So these are all on the confluence. And that's the first step every team has to do is what event course do you want to do? Of course, for us, it's good if as much as possible. Yeah. Isn't it usually like a layer of security? So what we do in this case, we have uh, full information, we create a database, and your API will just be information. So, so, so to deal with these cases, you, you can, so for example, uh, I, can, I can see an example with Twitter. Twitter will say, I can only have so much within days. Some people, they run it for a week or, or 10 days, build the database, and they do their Service that. that means the data that is going to be the lake is not going to be the full archive, it's going to be just a sample. But that's good because that sample helps us to experiment with some content. So, for example, let's say we only have one month of Twitter, but in the content we can do sentiment analysis and prove that Twitter could be a predictor of your stock prices. So we can demonstrate that to the customer, they say, oh, yeah, now I want to buy your product. They wait a second. 
is only a sample. If you want to buy a product, you have to replace that service with, with actually a commercial service. And that will cost you that much. So, so really, the goal here is to, with the event application, is to get data for the purpose of creating data sets and demonstrating what you can do. And eventually, and that's the beauty of a microservice architecture. If somebody is interested in the full service, you can throw away your fake database and replace it by the real service. That's going to be a pain. So and that's exactly the way the architecture has been designed: is to be able to, uh, yeah, make, make, make demonstrate some end user applications with sample data. So, for example, the Australian Financial Review. We don't have access online. They gave me a 10 year database. So I'll give you the files. You can have a service that, that can run queries over these 10 years, which is quite a lot. And then, if, if somehow the use case is interested in more data, then we have to contact them and say, Good question. So, so again, uh, I have got my hands on some other sources of data. I just put the link, uh, like social economic status, house prices, things like that. Or you can go to social media. If you think social media, are these events interesting? But again, this is what I do is, I rely on you maybe to find some interesting sources of data that I haven't thought about. So uh, yeah. So if, if you have a good idea, find a good API, that you think should be there, uh, why not? And, and that will be your contribution to the event intelligence application, uh, that particular API that will uh, be uh, available for future uh, application builders. So why are we doing this? We want you to learn a new domain. Uh, so the good thing is people who are going to do the social media, maybe they learn more about social media. Those who do the weather, maybe they learn more about the weather. Uh, those who do financial markets and so on. So in some cases, some of you have already some interest. So maybe your work or in another project, you're already using data from source and you think, ah, I'll use that data for this purpose. So feel free if you have some very uh, personal interest, and of course you need to discuss this with your team. Uh, you can combine this project with something else that you're doing or, or maybe some, some of your hobby. But again, think always about events that affect the economy, uh, events that sort of somebody has an interest in try to understand how they affect other events. So, of course, if you have a data source that doesn't really connect to anything, then that would not be a very interesting data source. And of course, this idea of being able to do rapid prototyping through DevOps and, and throw in some microservices, some of them could be dummy microservices with sample data, and later on replacing them with, with uh, is, is what we want you to learn. Is, is delivering something quickly, and then later on, different bits of the software could be replaced by more of us bits, or in some cases, you have to pay for the service. And this business analysis, because you have to understand the requirements, uh, microservice design, because we give you recommendations and you have to abide by these recommendations, coding, testing, and the DevOps is all. Uh, part of what we are trying to do uh, in terms of learning outcomes for this course. Yeah, so that concludes the uh, initial lecture. We went through the course, the way it's structured. We talked a little bit about the domain that you're going to work on. And any learning, you can ask questions now. Or we're going to have a quick pause. And you can come and, and, and do the question directly if you want to. So, uh, should we do 10 minutes? 10 minutes.
10 minutes break.